Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Port Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-host, as always, is... Bonjour, I'm Malia. What? And this week, she is alive. Dun, dun, dun! Yes, and it turns out that um, somebody else really does have a way to back up her words. I am surprised by this. Oh, but we will get to that momentarily. Last last week we left off with with Morgan, very very justifiably so, pulling a everybody betray me. Yes. Yeah, very just. Because everybody kind of did betray, betray him. Yes. Be- they betray me. They tricked me. They they, they 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 didn't keep their promise, and I don't care anymore, or or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> so Morgan goes. Not... Yeah. Yeah. Morgan ends up going to tell Olivia as we saw at the end of last week and he just spends how long did he spend sitting there just going on and on and on it's it's, oh, it's almost God, like no nobody in this show like can get the fucking point ever it's I think it's against the rules uh, but yeah I'm gonna tell you something I'm gonna uh, tell you something I'm gonna die some. Eh, I'm dead. <laughs> that guy was the gallery over there, also known as my daddy. Yes. Uh, so yeah, after all of this around, Morgan ends up not telling uh, uh, Olivia, Olivia about Sonny and Ava. Although Olivia Olivia does know that something happened, and that because of it, Morgan and Ava are not together. And it's got Morgan really pissed off to the point that he's willing to go and tell her. Yeah. So it was like... Well, mm. I don't think that she would ever, ever guess that Sunny and Ava had sex because it makes no sense! This is true. This is very true. So, uh, but although according to some of the promos I've seen, it looks like she, she at least will suspect. Although I do like, I do, the one thing I do like about Morgan actually just leaving it be and not telling Olivia directly, it gives Sonny a little bit of extra rope to hang himself with. A little bit of extra. Because since since he uh, didn't tell her, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. he had the the opportunity to come clean when he was caught and didn't. Yeah, that's... uh, Yep. Come back to the ass. Yes, another peg down for you, Mr. Corinthos. Yes, please. Take it, by all means. Add that to the other loads of Catholic guilt you feel. Because you <laughs> killed your son's biological father. Yep. Yeah. Just, just, just add to it, add to it, add to it. <laughs> and then Morgan goes and finds Julian. Yeah, that and was... And yeah, like, Morgan. Morgan tends to lash out. Just, just, just a little. Just a little. Yeah, and it's like, oh god damn. Doing, doing things like uh, when his girlfriend uh, cheats on him, going and doing something that he knows very well will probably get her killed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's something Morgan will just do, spur of the moment. Yeah, he's a little hot-tempered on that one. And it's just, it's just, oh dear. <laughs> and, and of course, Julian has to go and tell fake Luke. Yeah. And fake Luke is like, well, you're gonna kill your sister. And it's like, <laughs> which, which, to Julian's credit, he's very uncomfortable doing this. Like, um, no? It, it's one and of basically- those... It's, it's one of those things that Julian, up until this point, you know, he, he's made his threats towards Ava and been very, very like, I will kill you sort of thing. 
But now that he's actually faced with a situation and somebody is actually trying to get him to kill Ava, he's th rethinking this shit. It's like, okay, maybe not. <laughs> So it, it's it's one of those things where it's like his threats to Ava are now looking quite empty. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, and of and of course Morgan tells him while he's supposed while he's trying to have a date with Alexis in the art gallery because there's supposed to be a secret. It's supposed to be secret, and and I yes. Very very quiet. It's a secret. It's a secret. Although it doesn't stop Alexis from telling Ned. Yeah. <laughs> to, but to her credit, she and Ned have been – they have been close for years, and it's not like Ned's going to go and tell the entire goddamn town, I don't think. Been a while since I've seen Ned on screen for any extended amount of time. I hope he sticks around more. Oh, He seems or, pretty nice. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Uh, you know, he's done, he's, he's a musician, he's done rock and roll, um, I think one of the first things he did, you know, when he was, like, aged up to, to, you know, to adulthood was, uh, Sleep with Monica. <laughs> Keep so, in mind, his aunt, by marriage, yeah. obviously, by marriage, so it's not, like, as incesty as it could be, but still, um... Yeah. General Hospital really likes to skirt the edge of incest, doesn't it? Yes. Because <laughs> we had the almost accidental incest with with uh, Britt and uh, Nate. And then last year we had Michael and Kiki, which was full-on incest, or at least we thought so. Turns out to not be incest, thankfully. Uh, they find a way to slip out of it, but I want to see somebody other than a Cassidyne slipping into the incest area. I want to see them do that. And I say other than a Cassidyne because I think somewhere back in their history or whatever there was some going on. But that's like way, 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 way back before they even came to the show. So, oh, speaking of Cassidines, hello, Victor. Yeah. Came back, he just... Just the timing is like, here, phone, call your wife. You know, in, instead of letting her call him. I don't know why, especially since Victor gave him the number. Yeah, there's like, he's like, okay, under this specific circumstance that I'm generously giving to you, you can talk to Robin, but uh, not any other time. Yeah, and so, of course, Patrick talks, and he's begging Robin, come home, please come home. And of course, Robin can't because because Kim McCullough isn't coming back to the show. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, Robin's at a critical stage in, in her in, in her research and in, in, in getting everybody you know restored to life or what have you. And so Patrick, being frustrated at everything, I mean, you know, he's been in a car accident. Somebody ran him off the road. Uh, you know, you know, his, 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 you know, Sabrina's had the baby prematurely. Um, he's worried about Emma. He's worried about his son. You know, he's got all of this, this, this stress on him, and he just wants his wife, and she can't come home. Well, it's not that she can't; it's that she won't, and that's the problem. Yeah, like that's that's the that's the ultimate problem. And you know, he finally just kind of. Like, I was so happy, because he's finally just like, you're always, you know, you, you are choosing Jason over your family, and I'm not okay with it. And he finally says the words that I have been wanting him to say for so fucking long, where he's like, either you come home now, or you don't bother to come home at all. Yeah. And when he said that, I was like, yes! Finally! <laughs> finally! He should have done that when she left. Yeah, like, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with that one. <laughs> like I'm sorry, but like you don't do to someone you love what she has been doing to the, to to Patrick and Emma. I'm I don't care, you know, how close she and Jason were. There would have been a way. There yeah. could have been a way to work it out. She had Victor Cassidyne by the balls. I'm sorry, but, you know, he kept trying to, like, uh, 
you know, tell her, you know, oh, you have to do this, you have to do this, uh, you know, for Jason. And, you know, at any point, she could have been like, you know what, I will do this, but on my terms, not on yours. Yeah, that's, she, she, how, that's how it could have turned out a little bit better. Huh. But, but nope, because, you know, and, you know, when Patrick says that Jason is more important to her than, uh, than her family, he's not wrong. No, he's not. I stand vindicated. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh God. And and you know, I mean, even though when when Robin originally left, I I remember what I said. You know, I can I could understand where she is coming from. I understand the position she's in. It's just at this point, the way she is written, you know, with 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 the whole holy shit, my family needs me, and I'm not going back for whatever reason. You know, I'm pretty sure Victor could have somebody cover her. For a little bit, you know, enough for maybe yeah. a day or two, at the very least. Then, yeah, and that's you know. the thing. Like, like I said, like I was so mad when I found out that Jason's in New York because yeah. there are so many ways they could find to fucking work that out. Yeah, so even... that she wouldn't have to completely abandon her family. Yeah, even without like like having uh, Kim McCullough on the cast on the cast roster, you know, if she had to leave the yeah. show, they wanted to work something out. You could just say, "Oh yeah, we visited Robin so and so," and it would be an off-screen thing, and that would be fine. That would be a lot more acceptable. But one thing, and I've seen a lot of fans get really up in arms over this, over the way that Robin as a character has changed between, you know, yeah. because of this, and it's like this is not the Robin we know. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, you know, I and I, you know, I don't know Robin as a character other than, you know, what I've seen, uh, you know, since, uh, uh, when she, yeah, since she's, since, since I she's came in last on the show year. Here. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure she was nicer back then, but, like, right now, like, they have made her character into someone who is just completely unlikable. I mean, like, I have no sympathy for this bitch at all. I really don't. And yeah. uh, I really, like, I really want, now that uh, Patrick has given her that ultimatum, for them to fucking break up and for Patrick to go back to Sabrina. Yeah. And be like, you know what, I was wrong. I was wrong to pick her. Which he was. <laughs> well, My I will dad. say, My I will say this. Like yeah, <laughs> I will say this in, in, in a couple of points of defense here. At the time, he thought Robin was going to be back for good, and yeah. of course, his wife. Naturally, I mean, even Sabrina understood. You know, hey, she's your wife. Cool, go on back to her. You know, that's fine. And then going in, oh, going in more into uh, Robin and how she left. The writers, not only did they mess with her character like they did, they also – I think the reason why they ended up having to mess with the character the way they did is because they put her in such a difficult position because she would have been fucked either way. She would have lost somebody, whether That's it would true. be her family or whether it would have been Jason. She would have lost somebody. It was an impossible choice, and I think – from a writing standpoint, that's not a good way to get a character out of the show, even yeah, whether it's temporary true. or permanent. I mean, if you want to take a character out of a show permanently, kill them off for real. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Uh, but the way the way they handled Robin's departure like this uh, is not the best way writing wise. Yeah, did yeah. it? Does it stir up emotion? Yes. Does it stir up conversation? You betcha. Does it? Does it stir up fans into a frenzy? Yeah. I mean, hell, look at look at the shows where we actually talk about the situation, and, and you mm-hmm. you get that as well. So in that sense, it does its job. But is it good writing? Not really. At least I don't think it is. In terms mm-hmm. of does this make sense? No, it does not. You put her, you wrote her into a corner, and and you you yeah. basically open the trap door under her. So 
so yeah, I can see where all these fans are coming from, and I even agree with some of them that 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 they they unnecessarily changed Robin's character to this particular point. Was she always a saint? No, but was she was she like this? No, not that she wasn't like this either. At least not from my own recollection or my research either, <laughs> because because between <laughs> shows I do try to do some research on on the show in general. I'm also that's just silly. Well, yeah, that and I'm also. <laughs> wanting to do like a sort of a sub series to this more video series where I talk about things a little bit more in depth, but that's going to be in the works for a little while. Uh, so of course research is going to be necessary. <clears throat> Any the way. So, um, Brit was of course one of the first people, you know, you know, suspected for running Patrick and Sabrina off the road because of their history and, and because of other things. And and Nathan's like oh, I don't I don't think she is. <laughs> yeah. And then then the the test the labs come back and it's proven yeah she's not, which everybody is like fucking duh, because yeah. what idiot even in even in soap operas what idiot would come back to the scene of the crime and, and supposedly try to help whoever it was they were paid to run off the road. Yeah, and again you know Brit has no uh, no reason. Like, she and Patrick and Sabrina put their differences aside. And I know Anna hasn't been, like... Informed. Close to that. But, I mean, still. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, yeah, she is the daughter of Cesar Faison and Lisa Lobrecht. But she's not as evil as those two. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Britt, when she came onto the, so onto the show in 2012, yeah, she was a bitch. She, you know, she earned her nickname The Bridge, okay? Yeah. But over time, and we got to watch it. We got to watch it, you know, after the Nurses Ball last year, and up until holy shit, the Nurses Ball is coming up. <laughs> yep. I love it. Oh, so um, so anyway, we we got to watch Brit grow and develop and, and basically become a better person. She still, you know, things that she did before her character development set in are bi still biting her in the ass, but. At least she, you know, at least you're seeing that. Yes, she's not just some cold, calculated psychopath. She actually has more human emotions. She has a heart, and you know, she's she's becoming a better person because of it. Uh, I do I do find it amusing that she helped deliver Sabrina's baby after Sabrina helped deliver her baby, which turned yes. out not be her baby, but that's a whole different story. But speaking of babies, Obrecht. Yes. Frau Obrecht. <laughs> Frau Obrecht. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. They. She. You know. Her words. Her got got to Dante and Lulu, especially since Brit rightly informs them. Yeah. Obrecht doesn't doesn't say things like that unless she can actually back up her shit. So. Yeah. So taking all of that in mind, you know they they cut a deal with Obrecht and release her. And before, you know, before Obrecht is let go or whatever, not only do they have Obrecht right then and there called to have the embryo delivered, and they also inform her, yeah, you're going to be wearing an ankle bracelet because we're not going to let you out of here. We're not. We're going to keep track of you so you don't pull some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And I love how she sits there and postures to the entire station, okay, which fun of you is going to be putting this on me? And in comes Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> Her son. Yes. <laughs> Who, after that point, he he had he went and he did tell Britt the truth, and Britt's like, "What the fuck? Oh shit!" Uh, <laughs> and it's just kind of this like cute, awkward thing that they realize, okay, what do we do now? <laughs> Especially since we <laughs> almost had sex. Uh, <laughs> oh, but that that that's a that's a cute, awkward. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, um, you know now. Uh, Obrecht, uh, you know, found out from Magdalene that uh, she had told Nathan, and that uh, Nathan and her dad indeed almost slept together. And she's like, "Well, of course, you know, those two beautiful creatures. How could they not?" <laughs> yes, it's, it's basically Obrecht saying, "See, I fucking told you so." Because they came from me. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I produced them, therefore they must be irresistible to one another. Yes. 
Pretty much. <laughs> oh, lordy. So, yes. So, oh, as it stands, Obrecht is basically a free woman although who wants to get to know her son and have be a family with her son and daughter. Noble, but can she can she quit Faison if he is still alive? Hmm. That that remains to be I seen. Know. Yeah. Oh, but but right before Nate went and confronted his mother, he went and confronted his other mother. Who who as as I mentioned, she is alive and she is Nina. And not only do we just hear that Nina is alive, we see her. Yes. And she calls out, and, and she whispers Silas's name. And then we don't see her again for the rest of the week. Yes. That would have been good for Friday. Yeah. But, yeah, I wonder why that was a, a Thursday cliffhanger. Well, but we'll, we'll see how things work out. And by the way, we also... Have a, we have a possibility for Nate's father? Yes! Holy shit! It, it's not a possibility. The way they tease that, it's not a possibility. It's a fucking certainty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, it's... So... There is no, like... No. Okay, so... So how, how they do this is, while she's talked to him and she's talked about his father or whatever, uh, we see that, you know, Dante and Lulu get their other embryo delivered to them. By Victor Cassidyne. Who they do not recognize. Of course not, because, you know, why would why would Luke tell them about Victor or have any pictures of Victor or Nicholas even? So, you know, no, you know, he's he was just he was like, OK, he was kind of second in command to Mikos. But but now Mikos is no longer around and he's the head of the WSB, which nobody knows. Least of all, Luke, I still have to wonder who the hell Luke really is. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll find out before the nurses' ball, which with this this is supposed to go up uh, probably probably Monday or Tuesday. Um, it starts on the eighth, so the next show will at least cover part of it. I'm I'm still debating whether I want this to be the nurses' ball to be all in one show or split it up between between two. We'll find out when we get there. <laughs> oh, so so yeah, Nate's a Cassidine. Yeah, that's gonna make things interesting. Yeah, because I I, I I I almost like hurt my brain trying to think of the family ties here. Because let's see, he is the son of Victor, therefore making him Nicholas's cousin. No, 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 no wait, wait, not 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 first cousin, but because Nate would be the same generation as Stavros and Stefan and Alexis, and Christina, and. So... And, and then that other woman in white chick that was supposedly Helena's daughter. So he's kind of like maybe a second cousin, maybe? I think that's how that First works. First cousin once removed? No. <laughs> and, then, and then add to that the fact that Brit is his sister from another father, yes. which would make yes. it very awkward. <laughs> You're my cousin. <laughs> And you not only almost married my sis. You not only you know you almost married my sister. Did you two? Yes, uh, yes we did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be an awkward family reunion. Yes, and of course you know at some point Victor and Nate are gonna have to meet up. You yes. know it. Speaking of meeting the father, <laughs> uh, we get to see Levi again. Uh, I still want to smack him in the face. Apparently Mac agrees with me. <laughs> Although Mac, is, Mac has always been overprotective of his daughters, whether they're mm -hmm. blood related or not, because uh, Maxie and Georgie, they you know they were they're Frisco's daughters. Robin is uh, Robert and Anna's daughter, and Mac I don't think he's had any natural children of his own. Uh, but but he's still just thought, as protective of them. I thought, wait, I thought Mac was Mac isn't Maxie's father. Maxie's father is uh, Frisco Jones. Okay, I don't think I knew that. Yeah, uh, I know he was around a little bit last year, um, around the time of the Nurses' Ball, actually. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, Frisco Jones's daughters are Maxie and Georgie. 
Um, but anyways, Max meets meets up with Maxine, her new boyfriend, and of course, just they just happen to be kissing. And Max is something like, "Well, oh, what are you doing with your tongue in my daughter's mouth?" or something like that. Something like that, yeah. And they just have this back and forth. Both of the girls are trying to play peacekeepy, please keep peacekeepers and all of that. And of yeah. course, with with both of them being from Australia, Mac living in Port Charles long enough to lose his accent, that sort of thing. And and you, if you watch back to like when Mac first came on the show, he had the accent. So he's not lying. He had it, but then he lost it. Uh, speaking of that time period, this was the same time period, and actually Scott brought it up when he and uh, Dante were talking about uh, Obrecht, was Scott's daughter, Serena, was conceived and born the same way that uh, Rocco was, you know, in vitro fertilization through through a surrogate, and that surrogate was Lucy Coe. <laughs> and I've seen the scene where Serena was born. I think they were like in some kind of snowed in cabin or something, and Serena was born mm. right there. So it's kinda kind of interesting. <laughs> mm. Oh god. But it it would be nice if they brought Serena back onto the show for whatever reason. They you know, t- enough time has passed because the girl who was playing her when she was on Port Charles, I think she was about seven ish at the time. So she could really actually play her you know the actress who was playing her could reprise a role and that would be that would be kind of cool hopefully she's still in, hopefully she's still into the acting gig hopefully she didn't get out of it like mara wilson did uh, you know uh-huh. <laughs> oh so <laughs> uh what else do we have what else do we have what else do we have because we've been spending like half the show on these guys <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy so uh oh. So, um, uh, yeah, Carlos. Oh, yes. He full-on admits he killed AJ. Thanks to Ava threatening Sabrina again. Yep. We still don't know who called out the hit. Neither of them are really making it obvious out of Luke or Ava. We, yeah. We, we still don't know which one of them did it. My money yeah. is going to be on oh. Luke at this point. And Ava's just oh. taking this and running with it. My 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 dad made the the point that uh, really, given the history with this show, it's probably neither of them, and that's the twist. That would be, that would be the twist. <laughs> oh, so so that, that that definitely would be the twist. But you know what? Ava's still taking advantage of it. She's running with it, and gets Carlos. Well, both to her and Luke are. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Although Luke, not so much, not as far as Ava is. Luke basically just got little Spencer to shut the fuck up. That's true. So, you know, Spencer's not doing <laughs> yeah, anything Ava, as far as we see. Ava got Carlos to fucking take a rap for a murder he didn't commit. Yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah. That's scary. Powerful right there. Mm. Oh, dear. And, and of course, to, to leave up with Ava, too, she realized she lost her earring. And Kiki ends up giving it back to her because under under Michael's suggestion, they're thinking, okay, maybe Ava had something to do with this because it was at her apartment that, that AJ was killed. And so, of course, Kiki goes over there to ask her and returns her earring, says, it was found in the crypt. What were you doing in the crypt? That sort of thing. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> uh, and when Carlos is recounting, you know, you know, you know, you know quote-unquote recounting, how he killed AJ, which we all know it's not true, but you know, they they re, they film the scenes anyway. Um, they they neglect when, when they actually show what's on screen. They neglect to show that he was not wearing gloves, which yeah, you know, obviously Anna can't see it. Nobody else can see it. It's only for the viewer. But but the, but then the question would have to be, you know, you know, and and this is something they probably thought of or whatever why were why weren't his fingerprints on the gun he probably wore gloves or wa- wiped them off so that's except, yeah except that that uh, doesn't jive with his actual testimony where he said that after he shot aj he immediately left yeah so he would have had to have so, been wearing gloves keep it now uh, keep, now keep in mind we're or, the, you know, or the audience is going to sees 
you know, the audience is the only one that sees Carlos without the gloves. So Anna would probably just assume, okay, he probably wore gloves, and then Julian picked it up, and that's how his prints got on it, which is not far from the truth. <laughs> but in, in actuality, they were just wiped off by Ava and Sonny. <sighs> yeah. So, so there's all of that. I was expecting it. Anna to just go all Phoenix right on Carlos's testimony because you know there's a hole in there somewhere. I know, but like she just kind of accepted it and like, <laughs> and so she did. She did that and she took the recording out and you know played it for Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know she started to get suspicious after she saw that uh, Carlos only you know, came up and decided to give this testimony after Ava visited him. But then he just kind of gave a. He's just like, well, yeah, you know, Ava was gonna tell, was trying to tell me to, to keep my mouth shut, and she's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, no follow up questions. Yeah, that's it's, it's like, hi, Anna, why are you holding the idiot ball? Uh, I mean, come on. Anna's always holding the idiot ball. God, come on. <laughs> Everybody sucks at their job in this town. Everybody. Good point. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so, at any rate, one other thing about Ava, before we, we well, before I think I can leave Ava alone here, is uh, she meets up with Sonny at, towards the end of the week, and he's basically telling her, yeah, um, I know that Julian knows you need to get the fuck out of town. Here, tickets, everything's been arranged, go the fuck to my island. Is he has an island. Ooh. <laughs> he, he doesn't have safe houses. He has a safe island. Uh, but as Ava's getting ready to go, in comes Julian. Yep. And he very reluctantly holds a gun on her. You can see it in his face. He doesn't want to do it, but he's like, I'm going to have to. Uh, and it's kind of funny how reluctant Julian is. To kill Ava, I mean, the two of them have done nothing but fight for a long time. Yeah. And which... he's been, you know, wanting her out of the business, and really, killing her is the only way she'll ever get out of the business. I mean, realistically. Yeah, pretty much. And, and I will admit, I, I'm going to chalk all of the, his bluster about shooting her, taking her out of commission, and all of that more permanent solution as a really extreme form of siblings bickering at each other. Because <laughs> yeah. that's pretty much what it is. And, well, you know, you know I, I threaten to kill my sisters all the time. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you mean... <laughs> I mean, for the you know all the kids, all the kids here, they're all you know, they're all siblings, and of course, you know, you're gonna have your bickerings. You can say, "I'm gonna beat you up" or "do this" or blah 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 blah. They don't always mean yeah. it. So, and I, I think this would be a more extreme case between Julian and Ava. Yeah. So, so yeah, and, but thanks to Luke, who says, "Yeah, if you don't kill her, I'll do it, and then I'll kill you." And not long after that, he's. You know, he's counting his money. He's going to be laundering through ELQ. And Ned, after having his talk with Alexis, who talks him into, you know what, just just trust your mother on this. Trust Tracy. And Ned's like, all right. You know, he goes in to apologize. He sees all this money laid in front of Luke, and he's like, what the fuck? Yes, that was that was a nice. <laughs> he's like, oh, dear. What is Luke going to pull out of his ass now? Who knows? Well, and like before that, uh, he was about to uh, do some cocaine right there in his office. I'm like, you really don't care about getting caught, do you? I didn't, oh. I'll, I'll, I was going to ask you when he was um, when not Luke was sitting in his uh, office. Um, he was like talking to a photograph or something like that. Um and uh, he said he said something to Woody. Yeah, I, I've heard Woody. I some people heard Buddy. Um, I that that sounds like a clue to me. Yeah, that that's what I that's what I'm assuming. And so I was wondering if you had any idea. Um, I'm not. I honestly don't have any idea. 
Um, I don't know if anybody named. Rem- I don't remember anybody named Woody that that Luke would have been in contact with, or any of his relatives for that matter. Um, I mean, if it was Lucky, he would have called him Cowboy. But it's not Lucky, and and Lucky wouldn't be in on this bullshit anyway. Because Lucky, for all intents and purposes, he's pretty much a good guy. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to go more black and white, Luke has always been more gray to begin with, but Luke is generally good. Hi, he saved the world. <laughs> uh. But, uh. and and of course, even before that, Luke, some, I, I think there was a point where Luke ended up at Kelly's and he, he tries to hint to Sean that, that, yeah, Rick is really the one funding Julian. You know, trying to yeah. throw throw him off his trail. Oh, and speaking of Sean, of course he and he and uh, what's her name? Oh God damn it! What's oh Jordan? Yeah. You know he and Jordan they have their little their arguments and their ultimatums back and forth, and now suddenly there's this new information about Sean, thinking that well may not have been friendly fire that took out yeah. CJ's dad. Hmm. Which is like uh, yeah. yeah but- and she's like, if, if you know, if you tell uh, TJ about me, I'm gonna tell him about you. Yeah, and and I think I don't remember if it was stated in show or if it was just on one of the message boards or or Facebook groups I've been looking at, but there seems to be some some sort of guessworks that that Jordan may not be an actual, you know, be doing it just for the fucking sake of the money or whatever. But that she's actually a plant. And one thing that does kind of give hint to that is that, you know what, I'll just take your money to go get it laundered. You know, to wherever it goes. And Julian, smartly, is like, no, I'll do it myself, thank you. Yeah. Uh, oh, dear. But, uh, oh, wait, we, we still can't totally leave Ava alone because we forgot about Carly and Franco. Oh, yes. Because Franco, he is fucking crazy prepared. <laughs> I mean, it's like they, they, they realize, okay, we don't have any evidence from AJ's phone because we don't know where AJ's phone was. Uh, well, you know, they, they try and track it and they need the password. And Franco just gives them the password right there. And like, how the fuck? Like, oh, yeah, I have, I, have all the, I have all the, you know, quarter week passwords. He's like, don't you remember? I, I was, you know. Try to steal the family business. He, um, he basically is like, come on, keep up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, quick little info dump, boom, there you go. <laughs> but, you know, it turns out to serve a better purpose in the end. So, you know, good on him and good on that memory. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I mean, if AJ used the same password everywhere, like Franco said he did. <laughs> yeah. That would, that would be... Just, just a little derpy on AJ's side, but then again, truth in television, I'm sure there are plenty of people that do that, even though they shouldn't. Sure, it's easier on the memory, but it's not safe internet practice. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> but I just, I'm just sitting here thinking, yeah, Franco is so not an idiot, so, but they find the phone. And it's actually in the hospital, and it turns up it's in the lost and found. Convenient. And Carly, I'm assuming she has the cord. Either either they gave her one, or she has a similar phone. Get some juice That's in it. True. Turns out there was a recording. And it was being recorded when the phone lost power. And they could and they could actually access this recording. You know, once it's you know done and processed and everything, they can access the recording. So they can find out what the fuck really went on that night. Yep. I don't know how. Maybe I, – I don't remember seeing anything about the phone being turned on, so maybe AJ had done it off screen. Yeah, that's the only thing I can figure. Either that or it's a, um, a retcon. <laughs> Could be. But oh, yeah, and there is that one, there is that one other thing. Um – Let's see, what was it? Oh, yeah, Carlos said AJ tried to call the cops, and he didn't have his cell phone. Yes. Oh, shit. So, so Anna does finally come around and see a hole in the thing, but but it's not, it's not as quick as I may have picked it up. Yeah. 
minutes. So, and also in terms of like time or whatever, time does go slower in in soap opera universe because I think this whole week took place over what two days, at most something like that. Maybe a day and a half. <laughs> so that that's that's bound to happen. I don't know what what when we're watching this together and. Uh... They start just going on and on and on and on. I I tend to start chanting, "Draw it out, draw it out, way out," because uh, <laughs> that's that's what they're doing. They're, it's the it's the form of padding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which I can understand needing to draw out certain things in a soap opera because you know you never know that an episode could be somebody's first. You know, you can understand, like, taking maybe the first segment of the show and recapping whatever particular plot threads they're going to be focusing on that day just for a little bit. You can understand that. And you can also understand maybe if you're trying to go for a certain length of time, maybe padding out a bit. But not so much to where people like you are sitting there and, you know, put, you know, pat it out, pat it out, way out. Boom. Yeah. It gets a little ridiculous sometimes. Yeah, a little bit of you just just a word of advice uh, for for any particular writers that might be listening in on the show. Um, tighten it up a little bit, you know. I mean, you you have. Yeah. Let's see. I'm looking at my cheat sheet on iTunes. All of them are 36 minutes. So let's see. We have one hour, two hours, two and a half. Um, six and five is 30. Um, let's say three hours. You have about three hours. Per week to draw out, you know, not draw out, but um, to flesh out these particular plot lines and these characters a little bit. You have three hours to work with. You know, you could do a little bit better in terms of the padding. I mean, you mean give somebody else, you know, you know, give, give say, oh, I mean, if and if you're gonna pad it out, make it at least a little bit more entertaining. You know, I mean, because there are times where it pads out and it's like, God. <laughs> really, let's just get on to something else, yeah. you know. But some of it, some of it is, some of it is decent padding out because it does. Maybe it shows different aspects to different characters. It shows like, like with uh, Sabrina and Britt, you know, in the in in the NICU or whatever the hell they call it, you Thank know, you. yeah. Ne- neonatal ICU. Okay, neonatal ICU, but pretty much there. Um, yeah. You know that uh, that admittedly is a little bit of padding, but it shows. But it's also showing how far those two have come since last year. Yeah. So that's un- more un- that's more understandable. Yeah. See, uh, that's character development a little. That, that you know, I, I wouldn't really call that padding. Right. Uh, you know, but when you know, yeah. Uh, there, there's the it's it's easy to spot the padding versus the character development. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so so anyways but speaking of sabrina the the reason why she ended up in the in the uh, icu there is you know against doctor's orders against against fucking epiphany's order orders here and with felix's help because felix is well he's felix you know she was you know of course she was trauma you know she was you know hurt in the accident so Everybody's like, okay, Sabrina, sit there, rest, 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 rest. And Sabrina's like, no, I need to get to my baby. And she convinces Felix, get her up there. She's bonding, looking in on the baby. And oh, the more character development happens. And then she is sent home, but she doesn't go straight home. She goes to the police station to see Carlos. Yes. As he is about to she's be. She's like, eh, this doesn't add up. Because, you know, Carlos told her. That he did not kill AJ, and she believes him as well. She should, um, and uh, so she's like, "I gotta find out what the hell going on here." Yeah. Oh. God damn. <laughs> and we we have a little bit with uh, Sam and and Silas as well. You know, Silas going to see a Madeline off as she's transported back to New York. To, to you know, go stand trial and go on, you know, serve her time there. And meanwhile, Sam goes and she tries to comfort Patrick a little bit, but of, unfortunately, it's Sam's husband that is that, that that Patrick has an issue with. 
even well okay it's more robin's devotion to yeah. her husband but you get the idea you know that that patrick has an issue with and and he's lashing out a little bit at her and you know they have, they have this they have this little thing but it, it is just damn dude you you, you you just wait till jason comes back looking nothing like uh, um steve burton yeah uh, cuz i think they ha- i think they have recast them or they're going to they're talking about it but and of course I, everybody's I like heard, no and and i, I heard admit, rumbling yeah yeah and, and i'll admit i'm not happy with it i can understand why but i'm not too happy with it and i, I think it's because with long running characters like jason and like robin recasting them just feels weird I mean, it would be like recasting Luke after all of these years, and he's been on here. He's been on the show since the '70s. It would be like recasting Laura or Scotty, or 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 even um, uh, oh god, who else has been on there for a long time? Or hell, you can even not even that long. Lucy, recasting Lucy, who's been on since just the er, just not the early '80s, but the late '80s. Same goes true for Victor. You know, recasting him would be a little off-putting. Um, of course, if they were to ever bring Mikos back, they would have to recast him because, well, hi, you know his original actor is dead. So I mean, and in that case, that's, that's a little... just a minor inconvenience. Yeah, I mean, and they they did. There were some recasts that over the years that did work, like when uh, the Quartermains first came to town. Uh, Edward was played by a different actor, and then I think he was recast. I want to say the early '90s, and it was that actor that made the role of edward his own that when that actor passed away that they just decided to have edward die on screen as well so and 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 lila lila uh, um edward's wife and tracy's mother she was such a sweetheart it's like the actress was a sweetheart and and and, and just she isn't she would have been another one of those yeah you don't recast lila quartermain you just don't do that and so they didn't when when her actress died, so did Lila. Um, and even going back to the the original cast members, uh, um, uh, John Berardino, who played Steve Hardy, who is Elizabeth's grandfather, by the way, uh, he was an original cast member from 1963 to uh, 96, I believe, is when he passed away, and the character died in the show as well that year, uh, which. Right after that time, the Cassidines returned. <laughs> oh, but that that's a whole another thing for another day. Um, let's get to get back to this week though. Um, what else have we have we not? Um, uh, oh, let's... I don't know. Was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. TJ. TJ, you know, yeah. a small one. TJ day. got into college. Woo! He's like, yay! And, and and of course, that leads him to reminisce about his dad and. Which of course mm-hmm. ties into Sean and Jordan talking about their things, and I, I still think because of the whole money laundering angle and Jordan not be not doing the money laun you know not being let do the money laundering, I'm willing to bet she is a plant for somebody. I don't know if it's for the feds, for the WSB, for a rival mob. I don't know, but we'll find out. Uh and and, and uh, another Cassidyne running around. At least at least they're not going to be. At least they're not all horrible. It's like when the Cassidines first started coming back in the mid '90s. You know that last time you saw the Cassidines, they were bad news, because you had you know the brothers that tried to freeze the world, and then you had Stavros, <laughs> who who had uh, you know was single minded on Laura to the point to where he would he had her kidnapped, and forced her to marry him. After after it was learned that Luke had supposedly died, and even raped her quite a few times, and unlike her previous rapist, she did not forgive him. Yeah. Because Stavros was no, just no. And so of course, when Stavros's brother and Stavros's son come into town, of course everybody is immediately suspicious because yeah, Cassidines are a bad lot, especially when Helena popped back up. This is the same woman that at Luke and Laura's wedding back in 81, she cursed them. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yes. Like, like she sat up back and she said, my curse on you, Laura and Luke. And 
and it's not just like oh i curse you fuck you no it was like so it was supposedly like the superstitious curse thing too and that played out a little bit here and there uh, and of course all of these cast nines coming back in the mid 90s you know culminated in about 2001 with stavros coming back and then they were gonna try and take over the world with some sort of biotoxin or whatever then 9 11 happened and they said no nope. so stavros just went on a terrorist and kill terrorism killing spree yay, yay. <laughs> uh, just to terrorize his family and his enemies and then get everybody down there and i don't know what they were going to do with it but you know ended up kidnapping and brainwashing lucky to to turn him into just yeah it, it got a little messy in terms of storytelling <laughs> but I, no I, really yeah <laughs> although to be fair i think if 9-11 hadn't happened it, we probably would have had a little bit more of a coherent story done with helena and stavros on that end but As, you know so, you know, I mean, I, 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 can't, I can't really blame the writers of the time too much because, oh, shit, 9-11 happened. We can't go on with this plot. We have to come up with yeah. something now. We have to find something for Stavros to do, especially since I think by the time 9-11 happened, Luke knew he was alive. So every, everybody at that point was figuring out, okay, this fucker is back. Oh, so... <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have more cast nines coming back, and not all of them are bad news, thankfully. Uh, I have to, s oh, of course, Stavros and Helena are the mainstays coming back. Though I would love to see that Victor try and bring back Tony or Mikos, because seeing them even even recast that would that would be an interesting turn and see how they would fare and what they would be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yes, <laughs> and next week, as I mentioned before, next week is the nurses' ball. Yee! And this is like the best time of the year for uh, General Hospital and, and General Hospital fans because it gives all the actor, well, not all of the actors, but a good chunk of the actors, the opportunity to go on the air and just flex their more musical talents, the more dance talents and. You know, other than just playing their characters, they can play those their characters doing different things. Like last year, Mac had a ventriloquist dummy show, and and it was there was like this little thing between him and Frisco over Felicia, and Frisco saying, you know, the one of you know Jack Wagner's number one song from 1985, "All I Need," you know, because well, it's the, it's the that, that's the actor, so <laughs> so you know they had that, and obviously Felicia chose Mac. And and of course Lucy ended up in her underwear as per tradition, because that that has been a tradition since the first nurses ball back in the nineties. <laughs> I'm really glad they brought it back. I really am, because it's a lot of fun. Like uh, last year, Ellie and Spinelli had the had their uh, musical number based around "She Blinded Me with Science," which <laughs> makes a lot of fucking sense. <laughs> yes, it does. And, and Bradford Anderson just really. He he and uh, oh god, I, I forget the actress's name already. I I feel so bad because I follow her on Twitter. Um, but um, but the two of them they just, they just nailed it. It was it was spot on, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I, I just wonder what's going to be happening. And that was also the same time last year was uh, when we found out that Faison is Britt's father. It was during the nurses' mm -hmm. ball. And thank you, Obrecht, for, for that little revelation. It's like, Jeebus. <sighs> but, yeah. Oh, but I can't wait, I can't wait, can't wait, can't wait, can't wait! It's gonna be fun! Yes, so... Oh, um, um, speaking of the nurse's ball, Lucy and Kevin. Oh, yeah! Because Lucy, yeah. Lucy has been giving kevin breakfast day after day after day and then just and kevin's like you know I'll, I'll i'll be fine you concentrate on on this and and he's starting to get a little suspicious okay what the hell is going on <laughs> yeah yeah finally finally i was sitting there i'm like yeah um he only just figured out you know he, he only he's sitting there and he's like yeah for about the last month you've been paying me 
breakfast and lunch. Hey, wait a second. That's suspicious. And I'm like, yeah, he's only a psychiatrist. It only took him this long to figure out that that was fucking suspicious. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the man who wrote a book about a serial killer, based the characters off of people in the hospital, and then some some real deranged killer took the book and used it as a blueprint to kill people in the hospital. Oh, that's nice. Yes. <laughs> and Kevin took it upon himself to try and solve the you know solve the case because hi, it's based on his book. He has some res- he felt some responsibility. Ah. Yeah. But that that was a whole different time and a whole different show. <laughs> <laughs> it was still a lot of fun, and even and the nurses' ball even played into that 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 particular year. Uh, that that actually ended with everybody looking up and seeing one of the interns um just hanging. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, was... So 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 what do you what do you uh, predict the uh, big twist will be during this year's nurses' ball? Oh, I. I'm wanting to say it's going to have to do with Nina. Oh, yeah, that's that's probably true. It's either going to be Nina or it's going to be a Cassidyne. Could be both. We don't oh, know. Oh, you Cassidines. Yes. Brit, Brit would only be – Brit will not be directly the cause of it, but she will be affected, I'm sure, especially if it's yeah. – especially if, if, if it's Victor. Yeah. Yeah, because guess what? It's going to affect her brother. It's going to affect her. Because yes. it's also going to affect her mama. Oh, dear. And by that point, I'm sure Sonny and Olivia will have figured out, oh, shit, Sonny stuck his dick in Ava. Yeah. And that's why. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that is going to be it for this time. I'm still debating whether or not I want to keep the nurse's ball to one show or split it up into two. Um, pay attention to my Tumblr, and, and you will, you will, you, and I will let everybody know by that. Um, but uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here for this week. Uh, thank you guys for listening. If we wanted to find you on social media, Namio, where could we find you? You can find me on Tumblr, uh, Namio's Corner. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Naomi Washburn. You can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. And you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Sweet! And of course, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblrs at Gomer21XX. You can also find my stuff at RTGomer.com at NerdVice.com. And if you like the show, if you like if you like any of my shows and you want to throw some money at me to help financially support the shows and, and get better equipment and better setups and even a better studio space um you can check out my patreon at patreon.com slash gomer 21 double x and um and if you forget that don't worry i'm going to be starting a thing every wednesday my tumblr is going to have this massive massive mega post for temper for patreon not just for myself but for a few other people including my girlfriend who does lovely artwork for me uh, her name is becky and you can check and her out awesome. she yeah. is awesome you can check out her stuff at patreon.com slash becky hop Go and check it out. She is an award-winning animator. Throw a hundred dollars at her; she'll do some for you. Go do it. Go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, so yes. Again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. Oh, oh! Before before we sign out, yes, we are on iTunes. We are officially on the oh, really? iTunes. Yes, we Woo! are officially on the iTunes. Um, right now the way it's set up, I can only have 50 on there at a time. Thankfully, we're not up to that point yet, so once episode 50 hits, well, I'll try and figure out something. Um, and, and that's more of a technical thing. I'll have to see what I can do about that. But you can find this show on iTunes. Just look up the Port Charlie podcast and there you'll find it. <laughs> so subscribe, put it on your MP3 players. Listen to me while you're driving down the road. That would be kind of a, that'd be kind of a neat thing. <laughs> I've listened to myself driving down the road once. It's yeah, okay, okay. For me, it's not as interesting because I listen to myself all the time. You might find it better though. So, so yeah. Oh, uh, so yes, iTunes. You can check us out there if you want. And um, yeah, so that's basically it. So until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.